tell them This the year I finally grew up and I turned into Jordan This the year I finally wake up everyone who was snoring This the year I finally wake up everyone who didn't believe me When I was sleeping I just can't With the recent resurgence of Derrick Rose I thought it would finally be a good time to revisit the argument for Derrick Rose in the Hall of Fame. As we all know, Derrick Rose is the youngest MVP in NBA history, but he unfortunately had a terrible series of injuries that plagued his career and robbed us of enjoying his absolute prime. Reflecting on his entire basketball career so far, I've decided to start back in his days at the University of Memphis before I work my way all the way up to today. Considering the Hall of Fame is merely just the Basketball Hall of Fame and not the NBA Hall of Fame, Derek's Team USA appearances and college performance must be factored into his resume. Without further ado, let's get started. Starting with his days at the University of Memphis, Rose had a decent one and done season, averaging 15 points, 5 assists, and 5 rebounds in 40 games. Derek led his Tigers to the number one seed in the South, where they managed to make their way to the national championship game. However, they did lose to the Kansas Jayhawks. Despite pulling off an impressive freshman season, his college days were probably just too short to help Derrick's Hall of Fame case, especially since all 38 of their wins were vacated that season due to Derrick's SAT score controversy and the fact that his brother was traveling with the team for free. Before getting into his NBA accomplishments over the years, Derrick has two Team USA appearances, FIBA 2010 and 2014. Although the USA did win both FIBA tournaments, Derek didn't exactly play that well considering the team was stacked with all-stars and minutes were pretty scarce. Unfortunately, Derek also tore his ACL three months before the 2012 Olympics started, resulting in him never having an Olympic appearance. In this case, his Team USA accomplishments are likely not enough to help his Hall of Fame chances. There is the possibility of him playing in 2020, however he was not invited to camp so that's really up in the air at this point. Taking a look at his NBA career, we all know that Derrick was the first pick of the 2008 draft. He pulled off an impressive rookie season, averaging 16-4-6 while leading his team to a playoff spot as the 7th seed. This was good enough for Rose to earn Rookie of the Year against the likes of Kevin Love and Russell Westbrook. The Bulls eventually lost to the defending champion Celtics, although they did manage to take them to 7 games in one of the best series in recent memory. By his second season, Rose averaged 21, 4, and 6 while making his first All-Star team and leading the Bulls back to the playoffs before they eventually lost to LeBron's Cavaliers in the first round in five games. Although the early success of Rose helped build his legacy and make him a household name, his MVP season in 2011 pushed Derrick into superstar status. At the start of this season, Derrick said that he wanted to be the MVP of the league. Why not? Why can't I be the MVP of the league? Why can't I be the best player in the league? I don't see why. Why? Why can't I do that? Um, I think I work hard. After leading the Bulls to the best record in the league that year, Rose won the MVP as he set out to do. This single MVP is the biggest factor for D. Rose's Hall of Fame chances. Being the youngest MVP in league history while leading a storied franchise like the Bulls to success they had never achieved since the departure of Jordan does wonders for his Hall of Fame eligibility. This is where things get a little iffy. The following season, after the NBA was in lockout, the Bulls finished with an NBA best 15-16 record heading into the playoffs. Derrick was an all-star and the reigning MVP. Everything was good until Derrick rose up and tore his ACL against the 76ers in Game 1. The Bulls went on to lose that series and the injuries just kept piling up for Rose as his career progressed. He had a few bright spots here and there, but every time he got into rhythm, an injury would occur shortly afterwards. He's now bounced around from the Bulls to the Knicks to the Cavs, waved by the Jazz, and now on the Timberwolves. Since this season started, D. Rose has been on a tear, averaging 19-4-5 with a 50-point performance in there. Rose has stated that his goal is to win 6th man of the year, which may or may not be attainable depending on whether he starts more or not. Of all things considered, the best chance Rose has for improving his Hall of Fame chances is for him to get voted in as an All-Star this year and win 6th man of the year. If he somehow won a championship later in his career, it would definitely help his chances. As it stands, D. Rose will likely be the only MVP in NBA history to not make the Hall of Fame, which is the curse of winning the MVP at such a young age. 
Other guys like Ralph Sampson have made the Hall of Fame and fewer accolades. However, most of those guys had stellar college careers. Truly, only the future holds Derek's fate whether or not he's going to make the Hall of Fame. As long as he's in the league and performing at a high level, he will continue to build on his legacy. Personally, I think D. Rose should get a spot in the Hall. We may have only seen three great seasons from him, but what he showed us in those three seasons were unlike anything we'd ever seen from a point guard. Derek's legacy transcends his honest court play. He's a cultural icon in the basketball community, and he's a hero in Chicago. At the very least, the Bulls organization should retire his jersey one day for all that he did for the city and the organization. What do you guys think? Comment your thoughts down below. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. This the year I finally grow up and I turn into Jordan. This the year I finally wake up and I'm one who is snoring. This the year I finally wake up.